This month's infield breakdown is one of my absolute favorite sets as an instructional set. Um, if you've been to my hot seat, you may have seen a little clip from it where I show how to go for the kiss. Or if you have text and dates machine, you may have a little bit where um, I show kind of how to structure a date and that kind of stuff. But what I really love about this set is that it's one of the best examples I've ever seen of how to escalate off of a girl that's very much small talk. All right, a lot of guys have this problem where if the girl keeps like just talking and talking platonically, changing the subject to small talk, how do you escalate? <clears throat> how do you take a platonic conversation and make sure that it does become man to woman when the girl doesn't seem to be helping you or when even she's not overtly not helping you, but she's just very chatty? How do you deal with that? The other thing that you're gonna see in this is you're gonna see me identifying the blueprint. <clears throat> and so what happens is I, I have this, this lengthy interaction, like the time from when I meet this girl to when I have the first kiss on this date, it's over an hour. <clears throat> and it's a lot of just small talk. It's a lot of just, I try and sexualize it and she goes back to small talk. I deal with the small talk, 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 try and sexualize it, she goes back to small talk. And I keep trying in various ways, it's not working, it's not working, it's not working. But there is one particular format that does work. And you can see it, I'm gonna show you four different segments where I'm using this format. <clears throat> and at first it works a little bit, and then it works a little more, works a little more, works a little more, and I'm able to sort of identify the format and keep repeating it, repeating what worked, um, until you see it really fully work. Um, and so I'm gonna show you those four escalations up until the escalation where I finally do go ahead and make out with the girl, uh, and then I'll show you the poll. Uh, so without too much further ado, let's crack into the actual video. You have, you have the most expressive face ever. Really? You do. That's not good. It means you can't lie to me. <laughs> I'm a really bad liar. Yeah? <laughs> How did it make you a great salesperson or a terrible one? Um, well, it's easier to lie over the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. I'm not, gonna, <laughs> I'm not doing phone calls with you now. Well, that's why they meant. Do you have... Do you have an iPhone? No, I have an Android, why? Okay, I always find, like, obviously, like, you have iMessage, and my messages weren't going through to you, because I don't have good cell reception in my... I'm pretty sure I got your messages. No, no, I know, but, like, on my end, they were saying that they weren't going through, oh, really? and then you were responding to them, so it was oh. weird. Like, I was getting, like, a bounce back. Huh. But the same thing happened with my friend that has an Android. But anyway, the benefit of having an iPhone is that you can FaceTime. I don't know what FaceTime is. You don't have an iPhone. Oh, is that like, oh, that's like Skype for a phone, basically, yeah, where you yeah. can like video call? Uh-huh. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the detriment is that you can't mass text and everybody knows when you've looked at the text and it's like very impersonal, right? There's all those kind no. of things. Yeah. That's, first of all, it's so not true. Really? You can, why, first of all. First of all, why do you want to mass text? Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you really want me to explain to you why I want to mass text? Yeah. Really? Say I go to a city that I haven't been to for a while and I want to get in touch with all my friends from that city at once rather than having to send like 20 or 30 text messages. What? How many friends do you have? I mean, I get paid to talk to people, so. You have a lot of friends. So by friends, you mean clients? No, you mean friends. No, I mean friends. I mean people that we know, people that my company knows, and I also mean sometimes girls that I know in various cities. Oh, okay. That, w that was the implied. <laughs> Do you really want me to explain? <laughs> That's kind of rude. What is? That you text mass text girls. <laughs> Only ones I haven't talked to in a while. <laughs> That's actually hilarious. You must have a really good memory if you can remember every city where they are. Mm. Yes. I guess, you know what, you cannot do that on my phone because when you mass text... It knows. Yeah, like every It shows all the recipients. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So I guess I should get an Android so I can... You should get mass text your clients? Yeah. Well, you can see no, our... I, I meant guys. Oh, It'll be a lot uh, easier on the thumbs, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's Dear Diary, the girl seems so sweet, but halfway through the first, you know, drink, I found out she was a little player. That was 
How's your replay? It was decent. It's hard to find good reasoning though. I like German replay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like them sweet. Okay, so a um, couple quick notes. First of all, this is obviously dated since I didn't know what FaceTime was. It was like when iPhone and all that shit was like more new than it is now, obviously. FaceTime, by the way, and Skype is the shit for, for text and phone. Use it a lot. Um, I actually talk about that in like the, the whole text game product. Like, the fucking amazing. If you can get a girl to do that, you're basically going to get her out on a date. Um, so that's dated. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, um, the fact of the matter is, look, I'm continually trying to sexualize it in, in subtle ways. Oh, the other thing that I should mention, this girl knew going into the date what I did for a living because I did an experiment. It's an online date. Um, and I did an experiment where I actually put my YouTube videos in my profile. So she knew going in I was a dating coach. So normally I wouldn't talk this much or, or this blatantly about mass texting girls and shit that is a massive violation of trust. But I figured that in this particular situation that ship had sailed by the time she looked at my videos anyway. So I may as well just own it and just be the biggest player possible. So just so you know, that's not something I would normally do either. Um, but what I really want you to notice is the tone of this conversation, right? She keeps bringing up this like, how's your Riesling? Let's talk about iPhone versus Android and texting and blah, 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 blah. It's all these very platonic conversational subjects. <clears throat> I keep trying to bring it back to relationshipy subjects in subtle ways. <clears throat> and for the most part, it didn't work, right? For the most part, um, she just kept on random conversational topics. She kept veering it away. But the one thing that did work was when I made a, we call it a mini cold read, but when I made a statement about her specifically, right? You have the most um, adorable face or like expressive mannerisms or something like that. When it was specifically about her and it drew some level of like self-consciousness from her, it worked. Now this wouldn't work if it was an insult, but essentially I've, I've sort of stumbled on a little bit what her blueprint is, which is I call it ad hominem. It means about the subject, a statement about her, a statement about her gets a very big reaction. Statements that are just sort of implying sexuality or implying things obliquely don't get a very emotional reaction. They kind of, they'll, they'll get onto a conversational topic, but then she's just gonna address it the same as she would any other platonic topic. So it's very important for getting under this girl's skin that I make it about her. That, that's the blueprint from what we've seen so far that seems to work. Now we're gonna see me kind of doing that a few more times and it unfolding to the point where I really know what it is. And so when it actually does work, on you know, one of the later times, you'll see that it's not an accident that it worked. I actually sort of figured out her conversational blueprint. <clears throat> what are you looking at now? Or what are you thinking about? I was thinking that I really like the way you express yourself and that I really hate the fact that we were just having a conversation about email at the same time. Why? I like, I like the way you express yourself though. How do I express myself? You... You have unique perspectives. Like I feel like you actually think for yourself as opposed to just like doing what you're told, which I like. <laughs> and I feel like, I feel like you have an aesthetic to what you do. Like you care about the way you look, you care about doing things in a particular way. Um, I feel like you're speaking like a life coach. The Tell shoe me fits. more. <laughs> I'm done. I'm officially done, smartass. <laughs>
very telling. I'll be insightful now. Okay. Tell me about me. Um, I really don't know that much about you. I feel like you're very um, analytical. Can be. Yeah, definitely very analytical. Um, probably a blessing to curse. For you, right? Mm-hmm. That's all I can do right now. I'm an open book. I'm just a sweet, shy, hopeless romantic trying to make his way in this big, bad world. Well, you picked a bad world in New York. And it's just like, am I being played? So here again, you can see the pattern of me trying to make it about her and her deflecting. In this case, instead of deflecting into iPhone and email conversation, she's now deflecting it into about me. And the reason is I specifically, the start of it, I was like, I, you know, the fact that we're talking about iPhone and email. So I called her out on, on basically what she was doing as a deflection tactic. And so now she can't use exactly that anymore. Um, but she's still deflecting it, right? But what you will notice is when I talked about her, she got flustered, right? She had an emotional response. She kind of didn't know what to say. She started giggling. She got flustered. So it's clearly having an emotional effect. And that's what you want to go for. You can't have these dates that are just platonic and she's not responding emotionally. Now, it doesn't mean that just because it escalates at one period of time that it has to keep escalating, keep escalating, and keep escalating. It's fine. It's fine to back off, chill it out a little bit, go back to platonic or back to normal conversation, and then re-escalate it again. Two steps forward, one step back is good, but you just can't let it always be step back. You have to keep moving it forward, and especially when you find something that works, i.e. in this case, again, making it about her works, keep hammering on that thing. Now, you don't want to make the entire conversation like that because it's too obvious, it's too pushy, but when you find something that works, keep going back to the well until and unless it doesn't work. I mean, it's like, does this girl know a little more than she lets on? Is this girl actually dangerous? Dangerous? Yeah. You could be very dangerous, my dear. How can I be dangerous? Really? Surely you know. I, now I kind of wish I watched more of those videos. Oh, really? Why? Because <laughs> I intrigue you now? Yeah. Well, you know what? I normally watch TV before bed. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to watch me before bed? <laughs> I actually love YouTube. Do me a favor. What? Never mind. It's, it's super creepy for me to say I, what I was going to say. I already know what you were going to say. So what was I going to say? Well, there are several ways you could have gone in the head. Do me a favor. Sorry, I cut you off. What? It's okay. It doesn't matter. I'll just leave it to the imagination at this point. It's better that no, way. I'm nervous. You're nervous. Well, you're the one that mass texts females. Which is kind of like. Is that a red flag for you? No, no, no. It's like when we talk about Darwinian dating theory, which is what I've called it, Darwinian dating theory. Darwinian dating theory? Yeah, don't steal that. That's mine. Don't worry. I already, I mean, I, I don't use that term. I already basically teach that, but yes, it's that's, fine. That's like my, I call it Darwinian It's an Allisonism. Theory. Got it. My mm -hmm. thing. So that's like you like trying to spread your seed everywhere. Mm -hmm. Right? Sure. We need mass text. When mass text. No, that's exactly what it is. Maybe. Like, I totally understand why guys are the way they are. Yeah. I totally get it. You're right, I do know more than I should know. Yeah. Are you adventurous? Super adventurous. Yeah. Is why so if I was like, let's go on an adventure, he'd be like, let's do it. Yeah, but I have a feeling that something's coming after this. Or no. Okay. I didn't even have anything in mind in particular. I was just curious. I am really adventurous. Good. Actually. Are you? I'm very shy. I'm. Um, I, I, I rarely travel. I get really nervous around girls in particular. I've never had any interesting life experiences. And you know what your problem is? What's that? Is that you went from being 
like so self-conscious about girls to being like you went from zero to 60 right so now you're like up here okay and you're like so overconfident about girls it's like crazy go on now how do, you, how do you know it's overconfident? Because you keep bringing it up. I technically, I think it was the topic of conversation a it minute ago. Topic of, no, 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 you're right. <laughs> it was the topic of conversation. Come here, you. Yeah. Shelly girl. I'm just saying that, like, you do have, like, this thing. So now you can see, same thing playing out a little more, right? <clears throat> so now she's a little more comfortable. There's been more time. I've kind of, like, been doing this, like, you know, gradual, inevitable escalation for a bit longer. And you can see she's, she's responding. It's a little, she's cracking. She's qualifying herself. She's getting flustered. It's definitely working. She keeps trying to do this thing where she deflects to me. But again, even as she's deflecting to me, it's to sexual subjects. And then right here, I want you to notice it's when she gets a bit flustered that I go ahead and escalate physically. All right. That's a very key, right? I'm not like when we're having this platonic dull conversation, that's not going, hey, come here, let me take your hands, right? Escalate on high points, okay? High points are where you escalate, high points are also where you push her away, and that's how you get her to qualify. But you make your moves on high points, all right? And how do you create the high points? Well, it's by this gradual, inevitable showing of intent and finding out what it is that works for this particular girl. So again, her blueprint, when I talk about her, it works very well, okay? And especially when I talk about her in a sexual way, a sort of like, judging but positive way where it's a little bit ambiguous. If I were to outright insult her, it just wouldn't work, right? She's pretty confident. She's, she's not going to like, she's not dumb enough for that to work really. Um, but when it's kind of a compliment and an um, <clears throat> and a, and a ambiguous statement or a compliment of potential insult all packaged together, she wants the compliment. Um, she's curious. She's intrigued. And so she's going to go with it and she buys in. Okay. And then again, when she's flustered, that's when I escalate. That's very important because you're going to see that when I go for the kiss, that again, it's when she's flustered that I'll make the big move. I don't make the big move out of logical and make the big move on a high point. Like where it's like, so it's, it's like what? I don't know how to describe it, but it's like very like, okay, well girls, it's almost like girls are like the enemy or like the enemy, friend of me, the friend of me, the friend of me. Baby, do you feel like my enemy? What? Do you feel like my enemy right now? No, I don't feel like your enemy. I Are we like demarking like... battle lines right now? <laughs> you and I? We're drawing up quarters. I'm getting together with my advisors and coming up with a, a strategic plan. What? <laughs> I was taking the war metaphor to like it's logical extreme, don't even. Whatever. No, I didn't hear what you said. I said I'm getting together with my advisors and drawing up a strategic plan. This is cute. Is this all one ring or is it two? It's actually three. It's three? How's it three? The, the third one is at home. Oh. You just confused the shit out of me. I'm like, did I learn to like lose my ability to count? I don't think I'm it that was, I really don't think I'm that martini. drunk. Damn. I was like, you know, becoming intoxicated with something. I thought it was you, but apparently I'm just drunk. <laughs> yeah, so. You definitely like have this complex, I can tell now. And now that it, now it's complex. See, like, no, you totally do. I thank you, my psychiatrist. I appreciate that. That you do. Admit it. Admit no, it. Because everyone has what's, a complex. What's my complex? It's I can't. About, I can't admit to women. something undefined. What's my complex? It's like about women. I don't know. I shouldn't even say this to you. That's like really bad to say to someone. It's okay. I'll probably hate you and never call you after, but it's okay. I'm still curious. No, I can't even articulate. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I don't know. The thing is, I'm a weird combination though, because I started out as such a like, <clears throat> such a hopeless romantic with regards to women, uh -huh. and then I became very jaded because I saw. Right. That's the word I was looking for. Extremely. Jaded. I saw I saw girls do extremely scandalous things to other guys with me as the beneficiary. And so, um Really? Yeah. Like oh, What was that? What was that nervous look about? No, elaborate. It wasn't a nervous look. See like I think that you know I think that people Okay. You actually just gave me like this huge insight. Okay. So 
Everybody that's with me always says the things that you say about me, like just meeting me. That's with you. You mean like like boyfriends and friends, or like I just mean, like, like anybody who you meet? Okay. Anybody that like I'll like sit down and like talk to. Okay. I feel like they get the same impression about me, and I feel like everything is like written all over my face mm -hmm. in a way. To an extent, like they're like, oh, you're a, a mix between a businesswoman and posh daddy's girlfriend, puff daddy. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, like people... posh daddy's girl, not puff daddy's girlfriend. <laughs> Who's puff daddy's girlfriend? <laughs> what is this? I thought that's what you had said. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know. Whatever. It's what are you like, like, Kim Kardashian on crack? Anyway. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, have you what? seen her recently? She's a whale. Know. Is she really? Is she like pregnant or something, or is she just a whale? I don't know. I don't follow gossip. I don't no, know. No, neither do I. Okay. She's. Oh my god. Oh my god this is so long. So that I included just so you could see how even though it was very intimate a minute ago, it degraded all the way back to small talk, and that's not ideal. Obviously, I wouldn't prefer that to happen. But a lot of guys, they get very nervous or like they get in their head about that. It's okay. If you've escalated to a certain point before, you can escalate to that point again. Just be patient. Keep the conversation good. And then again, the same process you did to escalate in the first place, you're just going to do the same thing over, um, except it's going to go a little faster the next time and probably a little better the next time. And you've seen that, right? You've seen it worked a little bit the first time, a little more the second time, a little more the third time, and you're about to see the fourth time. But note that it did go all the way went back to friggin' Kim Kardashian puff daddy bullshit, right? That's not intimate. That, I'm like, oh God, what have I done to myself? I'm stuck in this conversation, right? But the fact of the matter is, because I'm not impatient with it, because I can just like chill in that conversation and enjoy it, and then I know how to start peppering in the intentful statements, I need to start peppering in, making it about her again, it will again gradually come around. And there's no rush, okay? There's no rush. In fact, the fact that it happens slowly actually builds a little more comfort, the fact that you're not trying. If you seem to be trying too hard, if you seem to be rushing it, that's where you're gonna fuck it up. So it needs to be there, and it should be this inevitable escalation, but it should never, ever feel rushed. It should always feel patient to the girl and feel like it just happened, all right? So now we've seen the format a bunch of times. Now I'm just gonna play it through, and you're gonna see um, the escalation. We're going to um, clip back into, she's going to be looking at my, um, my RSD Nation profile, interestingly enough, and I'm going to start teasing her. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a very um, sort of complex but um, <clears throat> sort of invasive almost um, observation about her. I'm going to say that she seems cool even though she seems like a total idiot and ditz. It's actually a very negative statement, but it's couched as I really like it, it's interesting, even as I'm saying you're not as smart as the people I normally date, you're talking about all these dumb topics, etc. Um, and you're gonna see the reaction. She'll try and like deflect it a little bit, but then she's gonna become self-conscious, she'll get flustered, and then that's when I escalate. So I'm gonna just let that play through. <laughs> like two and a half paragraphs. <laughs> this is so long, I can't make it through the second paragraph. No, I'm, I'm, I, I just got to this part. I'm That must have been really tough, actually, if you're a slow reader. Do you know who sings this? Oh my god, I would be so impressed with you. Like, I can't, I can't even, even hear the song. They actually. play the worst music. Channel. I can't even hear the it. The worst music. The fact I don't that know. Playing, <clears> okay, here's another. Here's another. Cyrus. Are you serious? Yeah. Like. Fair enough. I want to know who's iPad or iPod is playing. I would really love to know. Because this is like something that would come on if my iPod. <laughs> You know what's funny? You say so many things that I should find objectionable, but I actually really like. That's weird. What do you mean? Like, you actually cross over into like all these like stereotypes of things that I typically don't like, but you say them in such interesting ways, and you're actually cool about them. But I actually like it from you. It's very weird. I don't understand what you mean. Can you say? Can you explain and give me an example? Obviously, this was a good example. Yeah. Um, okay, like for example, like most people that I've dated seriously are like extremely, like extraordinarily like smart and like successful and like aren't like like bookish almost and stuff like that. Which you're 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 definitely smart. You're definitely like not dumb. So don't think I'm like you're. Not, I'm not saying you're dumb by any means. You're definitely not a dummy. But like <laughs> you, you're not like. The, your top, your choice of conversation topic is not of the same like intellectual nature. 
but you actually discuss things in a very interesting way, which I enjoy. So you say all these things that I'm like, if I was to be like, so after the, after the date, if my friend was like, what did you talk about? I'd be like, we talk about this, this, and this. I'd be like, that girl sounds like a total ditz. But the funny thing is, you don't completely sound like a ditz saying it. Well, what would you rather talk about? Byzantine art? Oh, well, there you go. Byzantine art. If I knew anything about Byzantine art, sure. <laughs> you take art history? No. No. So, you know what? You're so right. Like, I'm like this crazy juxtaposition between two worlds. So right here, she's just started seriously, seriously qualifying herself, right? She's gotten to that nervous bit. Um, she's flustered and she's about to start justifying, qualifying, and then she's gonna like forget what to say, very flustered, and that's the moment where I'll choose to escalate. So watch. Like, I'm smart and I'm dumb, right? Uh, I really am. No, like, I, I, I know that I am. Mm -hmm. And... Sorry. I totally just forgot what I was going to say. You're adorable, just so you know. Thanks. You're welcome. Especially when you forget what you're going to say. That was really coordinated. Do you teach, do you teach guys that in class? Teach guys what? Oh my god. <laughs> Check, please. I'm joking. Check, please. Sorry. This, is, this is over. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I couldn't do it. I couldn't not say it. Oh my god. I'm sorry, I wow. It was it was what? A good kiss? Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I, I'm I glad like I'm being you. judged. <laughs> well, I just expect a higher standard, you know. From me? Yeah. Wait, no, what was I going to say? It wasn't my really best look. Important. I was a little rushed. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> oh my god. No, wait, this is like really important. That you're smart and stupid at the same time or something? I know, no, no. I know, and I like had a. You said you forgot what you were going to say, and so I decided to distract you further. I know. Now I'm like never going to remember it, and that is super important. Really? I like that you're super important. Yeah. <laughs> so what you're about to see now is the very end. What happened in between, we had the kiss, we got intimate, and then again it went a little bit back to small talk, but then I um, sat over closer to her, we, we, and we escalated, we made out some more, um, changed seats with her when she went to the bathroom, we escalated some more. Um, and now it's kind of that same progression, except the intimacy is already more there. So everything's a little more intimate than before, et cetera. The escalation's already present. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm now pulling away the two steps forward, one step back. I'm doing it physically a lot. So when we leave here, she's going to say, stop pulling away. That's because I've so many times kissed her and then I pull away first. And so she's chasing and chasing and chasing and chasing. Um, so here, basically, we're just going to watch um, the walk home. Um, and you can see kind of how it all plays out. Huh? But you know how to pick up chips? I was an engineer. I couldn't do math. That's why I quit. That's a good reason. Because I can't do math? Yeah. Better? Right, but you're not coming upstairs. That's fine. That's fine. And so there you see um, the end of the whole scenario. And again, this was a situation that was very tough to escalate. This is a girl with the, this blueprint of so much small talk. So many guys have trouble with it because most guys 
they're, they're says they have this kind of momentum where it's like if it's on a high, if there's escalation, if things are moving forward, they can do well. But as soon as it gets derailed, they have a problem. And what you need to do is just start over and start peppering in that intent the same exact way you would over again and be patient. Be patient, patient but persistent and pay attention. Pay attention to what worked. If like a neg worked the first time, like sort of teasing and like sort of like um, judging a little bit or making it about her worked, <clears throat> do more of it. If a mini cold read, like, or like a future, hey, we could do this thing together, this like, like sort of like um, role play thing worked the first time, go back to it, right? If speaking from a high value frame and being arrogant or passing shit tests worked, make a note of that and keep doing what worked, okay? So what I'm constantly doing with girls is I have all these different like sort of um, <clears throat> techniques, all these different tactics that could possibly work, all these different ways of escalating that I've learned that have worked before, and I try one, and if it works, great. If it doesn't, I try the next, and I try the next, and I try the next, and when one works, I keep going back to it. Now, ideally, you don't wanna just keep hitting that one thing so blatantly it's obvious. Ideally, maybe you come up with two or three, but keep doing what works. The girl will tell you how to sleep with her by her reactions, all right? So it's constant, it's inevitable. It can be a patient escalation, but it has to always be present. And once you've escalated to a point, you don't have to hang on to it, you can back off. You don't have to like, oh, hold on. If you can't set it down and pick it up, you never had it in the first place.